Here we're going to look at a nice problem from the 1983 Brazilian Math Olympiad. But before we get started, I want to give a shout out to my friend Juan Villarreal, who did his PhD at IMPA, although he's from Colombia. For a bit, he was at Virginia Commonwealth University, and I saw him a few times while he was there. Okay, so what we want to do is suppose that n is a natural number, and then show that 1 is less than or equal to n to the 1 over n, which is less than 2. So as you'll see, that'll be pretty quick. And after we do that, we want to find a k, which is minimum. That is the upper bound for this object n to the 1 over n. So that's like the second part. Okay, so let's maybe jump into the solution for this first part. And we'll do that by noticing that 1 over is less than or equal to n to the 1 over n, which is less than 2, is equivalent to, and this is pretty clear, um, 1 to the n, which is 1, is less than or equal to n, which is strictly less than 2 to the n. So if we can show that inequality, then we're good to go. Okay, so let's maybe show that inequality by induction. Although this inequality is pretty clear, so it is unclear to me if you would actually have to check this super carefully on an exam. Okay, so let's maybe do that just for fun. So we have our base case, which would be n equals one. Notice for n equals one, we have one is less than or equal to one, which is strictly less than two. So we're good to go in that case. Now let's make our induction hypothesis. In other words, we suppose for m bigger than or equal to one, we know that one is less than or equal to m, which is strictly less than two to the m. Now we wanna consider m plus one. So let's do that. So let's notice that one is less than or equal to m plus one. But then since m is bigger than or equal to one, we know that this is strictly less than m plus m, which is two times m. Now we apply our induction hypothesis to say that this is less than two times two to the m, which is equal to two to the m plus one. So that finishes off this induction argument and this first part of the problem. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll do the second part. We finished this first part, it was fairly straightforward. Now we're gonna do the second part and I'm gonna do it with calculus. Although I know that it's totally possible without calculus, if you guys wanna post a sketch for a solution without calculus in the comments, that would be fantastic. Okay, so what I wanna do is set a function equal to something that looks like this inside here. So let's do that. So let's set f of x equal to x to the one over x. Now, essentially what we wanna do is find the maximum value of f of x and when it occurs and then somehow restrict that maximum to the natural numbers because we're really just evaluating this at n. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and do that. Let's recall that maximums occur at critical points. Critical points are where the derivative is zero or the derivative does not exist. So we need to take the derivative of this. Since we've got variables in the base and the exponent, we probably wanna use something called logarithmic differentiation. So taking the log of both sides, we get log of f of x is the same thing as one over x times log of x. Again, there we used a natural log rule, but that's pretty straightforward. Okay, now taking the derivative of both sides, the chain rule on the left-hand side gives us f prime of x over f of x. And then the product rule on the right-hand side will give us one minus natural log of x over x squared. So I'll let you guys check that carefully, but that's what you get with the product rule. Notice the derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. That's gonna be multiplied to natural log. The derivative of natural log is one over x. That'll be multiplied to one over x, giving us one over x squared. Anyway, that's how you get that. Okay, now multiplying both sides by f of x, Using the fact that f of x is x to the one over x, we get f prime of x equals x to the one over x times the quantity one minus natural log of x over x squared. Now, first off, we probably wanna notice that the domain of this 
is only positive real numbers. So maybe we could put that here, x is going to be a positive real number. In other words, it's gonna be on the interval zero to infinity. So keeping that in mind, we only need to look at critical points that are on that interval. And the critical points that will occur on that interval will only occur when this one minus natural log of x is equal to zero. That's because x equals zero is not on this interval. And then this thing I believe is never zero on that interval either. Okay, so we need to solve one minus natural log of x equals zero by that previous discussion, but that's gonna be the same thing as natural log of x equals one, but that's gonna be the same thing as x equals e. So that tells us that e is a critical point, which means it is possible to have a local maximum or minimum at e. So we'll use the so-called first derivative test in order to determine if that is a maximum or a minimum. So I wanna first notice that we're only looking at positive real numbers. So I'll put a zero over on this side. We don't need anything to the left of zero, including zero. Then I'll put right here my critical point E, and then I'll plug in some test points. So here, maybe we'll notice that if you plug in something to the left of E, maybe one, You'll notice that f prime of one, I believe, is just one. So that is positive. So here we have f prime is positive. But that means the behavior of the function here is increasing. Then if you plug anything to the left of e, sorry, to the right of e, maybe we could plug in e squared. Natural log of e squared is two. That's gonna make f prime less than zero, so that means the function is decreasing out here. But now we need to start restricting this down to natural numbers. So notice the number one is right about here, the number two is right about here, the number three is right about here. So la let's latch on to this number three. Check it out, if we plug in anything to the right of three, will we, get, we will get something smaller than if we plug in three. And that's because this function is decreasing. So let's maybe write that down. So for n bigger than or equal to three, f of n is going to be less than or equal to f of three. Okay, so writing that in terms of our original inequality, we have one is less than or equal to n to the one over n which is gonna be less than or equal to three to the one over three. In other words, the cube root of three. So it looks like we might be done, but notice this only holds for all n bigger than or equal to three. But that leaves us two values of n that we need to check. We need to check n equals one. Well, if n equals one, one to the one over one is one, so n equals one is also okay. So let's put n equals one there as well. And then we finally need to finish this off by checking that n equals two is also okay. And we'll do that on the next board. I'll clean this up and we'll get to it. So far, we've proven that n to the one over n is between one and the cube root of three for n equal to one or n bigger than or equal to three which means we do achieve this value of the cube root of three at three, so that's pretty clear. So perhaps our value of k here is this cube root of three. But the only way that we can be sure is to check the one outstanding case, and that case would be the n equal two case. So let's maybe write it in this way. We need to show, to finish this thing off, that two to the one over two. In other words, the square root of two is less than or equal to the cube root of three. So if we can do that, then we'll finish it off. So let's see how we can do this maybe most cleanly. So this square root is like two to the half. Obviously the cube root is like three to the one third. So we wanna think maybe what exponent could we raise both sides of this equation to or inequality to? that would maybe cancel all of the radicals out, but the LCM of two and three is six. 
So what we'll do is notice that this inequality is equivalent to the inequality given by the square root of two to the sixth is less than or equal to the cube root of three to the sixth. I just raised both sides of that to the sixth power. Obviously, this is something we want to establish, but we're establishing it by establishing this equivalent inequality. But this calculation is pretty easy. So notice this side right here is two to the six over two, or in other words, two cubed. This side over here is three to the six over three or three squared, but two cubed is eight, three squared is nine. Obviously eight is bigger than nine. Since eight is bigger than nine, that means that this object is less than this object, which means square root of two is less than cube root of three, which means we can add n equals two to our list right here. And that's a good place to stop.